Today we're gonna to dive into mass airflow tuning on the third gen platform, so stick around. everybody welcome back to the garage and we are touching on third gens again and so we're going to talk about mass airflow tuning today if you haven't already watched kind of the introduction to the third gen we go through just you know getting your as found downloaded getting your histograph set up and uh, in this case we're going to be using our bench force setup here so we can connect to a p01 uh, ecm on the bench these things are great they're a little bit pricey but they're very very nice to have around if you're doing any kind of multiple ecms things like that and then on top of it we are using the goat rope garage uh scanner layout so if you go over to our web page and go to store you can find it here now if you watched the previous video i show you how to set up the histographs on that so this is by no means a necessity but let's jump into it we've got our as found that we talked about in the last video pulled up here and we want to set this thing up to do mass airflow tuning and there's a couple big things that we need to do in order to do this effectively so we're going to start underneath engine airflow in general and then we're going to look for the dynamic tab and dynamic airflow is what blends in between the volumetric efficiency and the mass airflow system and so what we're effectively needing to do is disable the volumetric efficiency side of it and that way we are relying only on the mass airflow whenever we're going out and pulling our logs so we need to disable this low and it's a little bit different on different platforms but all of them for the most part are going to have a high rpm disabled some of them have a low rpm enabled which it kicks it back on this one has a histo hysteresis on it so it says that whenever it dips a 100 below this set point it goes back into dynamic airflow so we're just going to set this down to 200 we're always going to be above 200 whenever we're running and we're good there and then steady state also we want to lower this down so we're considered in steady state all the time so we'll drop that to 200 and lower our threshold on the map down to zero and that's it for the airflow tab but there's a lot of other things that we need to take a look at before we get into it so let's check the exhaust tab and if we have in recirculation enabled, let's go ahead and disable that so it's not causing us any false readings uh, from recirculating exhaust gas and then fuel's a big one because we've got to disable the narrow bands so they're not fighting us. If we were to go out and try to log with our wide band while closed loop is enabled, the closed loop system will be making corrections and so our logs won't get the true error ratio of our mass airflow sensor. That's why we don't like to use narrow bands. On top of it, they're not effective in being able to uh, make corrections whenever we go to empower enrichment mode, which is a very important thing for maintaining the safety of the motor under high cylinder temperatures. So let's kick over to the oxygen sensors here and we've got a couple different things that we can do. One of them, we just have an LF, LTFT, long-term fuel trim, enable. We can disable this right there. Also like to come in here and find anything that says closed loop enable and this is engine coolant temp versus IAT. And, and I'm just going to max this thing out. And 284 looks to be the max that we can do. So I'll go 283 so it doesn't get angry for using the highest value. And then open loop, we will have a short-term fuel trim. So let's go ahead and disable that also. After that, we can check our power enrichment, make sure that we have a safe power enrichment level. And this is actually a little bit too safe in my mind. We can come back and address this later, but at least we know that whenever we do get into power enrichment, it is going to be very rich now. So as I said, we're a little bit rich up here. Uh, we can open up the calculator, take a look at exactly what it is. So if we were in a Lambda, we could take one divide it by 1.301 and that gets us at 0.76 which is very very rich very rich we like 0.85 generally on a naturally aspirated uh, we could go a little bit richer on boosted platforms but uh, so I like to do about 1.21 1.22 so if we do 1.21 1 divided by 1.21 gets us at 82383 so we're getting a lot closer. 118, I believe, is the magical number for 0.85. So 1.118, boom, 847. Same ordeal. We could do 14.7. And if we divide that by 1.18, we're at 12.5, basically 12.45. So we are safely rich up here. That is the key takeaway right now. Later on, we can lean this out whenever we get the fueling all dialed in. But until we make sure that the mask airflow curve and the volumetric efficiency tables look good, we don't necessarily want to change this right now. 
Uh, some of the other things that we do want to look at underneath fuel is temperature control. If we have CAD over temp enabled, let's go ahead and disable that because that's something that can also cause it to dump fuel into the exhaust, which then skews our wideband readings. Uh, then cutoff, very big one on here, uh, DFCO. What happens is whenever you let off the throttle, it cuts off all your fuel, and that's what keeps it from you know igniting fuel in the exhaust and stuff like that. We don't necessarily want to do that because you'll have a big swath of lean that tears through your graph and causes your graph to get skewed. So we'll do the same thing where we have an enable ECT says over 104 degrees, this is on. So if we take this up to 280, shouldn't be an issue. And then at the uh, stall, we can use this also as another qualifier. We'll take it up to 12,000. So one of the last things before we save this and go out, we might want to take a look at the high octane table. If it's this is pretty laid back, it's not too advanced. If you see a lot of higher numbers in here, it's always a good idea to come down here into the wide open throttle section, maybe pull about four degrees out of it. You do that by putting negative four in there and adding it to the table. Uh, that just makes sure that we don't get into knock during this process. Uh, but as I said, this table right here doesn't look like it's going to be causing any issues. In fact, I see a lot of potential to possibly get more timing out of this down the road. So I might leave it as is for now and just keep an eye on the knock uh, reading on our graph as we go out and do our first log. Okay, now that we've got this saved, we're our, uh, set up, let's go ahead and save it. So we want to do a save as. We don't want to overwrite our as found. And we're going to go ahead and label this one just as, you know, Math step one. So we have step one in here. We can load this into the ECM and go out and pull a log. So we've got our log file already set up and we've gone out and done a mass, mass airflow test drive one. Uh, this one was being logged with an AEM in EQ ratio. You can see the lambda sim signal down here, our symbol down here in the corner. And so we have to make sure that we have EQ ratio commanded so it can do the math. And you can see over here that the math is already populated out. Now, bear in mind, some of this data down here at the very bottom, probably not necessarily true. You're not going to be operating this low in the math curve. Up here around idle is probably uh, where we're at. And in fact, you can see if we scrub through the data down here, this log was started whenever the vehicle was off. I suggest getting the vehicle up to temperature, starting the log while it's running, and then making sure to shut the log off before you... Uh, are, turn the vehicle off because once again at the end of this this goes to zero and then we have false data in the mass airflow sensor or not the mass airflow sensor but the wideband so that's just a nice tip to make it a little bit easier to keep your data nice and clean start the motor start the log stop the log stop the motor uh, one thing is said we do want to come in here let's look at our spark tables and there's some negative spark there that says we're getting some knock up top so this isn't from this ECM, but in this case, I would want to go in and possibly pull some timing on the top side. And then also we could check on our mass airflow curve to see if we're getting lean. And in fact, we're not. We're a little bit rich up top. And so we probably do need to pull some timing. Now, uh, I do know for a fact that this is a long tube setup. And so the knock sensors were a little bit overly sensitive. And that's why we were seeing some of this. But we can talk about that in a later date. Just Bear in mind, you want to check the spark retard table about every time that you go out and do a log to make sure you're not getting into knock because you can see if we go back to the advanced table, timing really takes a dive because in this area, we should be seeing, you know, 16, 14 degrees up in there. So keep that in mind. But let's get back to the mass airflow tuning portion of it here. And what we have now is this isn't bad. This is this is a pretty good reading so far. And in fact, down here, a lot of this stuff I would probably not mess with. Even the lean stuff is less than 1% lean down here. Uh, you know, in the rich stuff, we're looking at 2, 1%, 2. So that denotes that there's not a need for a lot of change up there now. Uh, even 2.1. I would probably leave that because you're going to have a hard time getting much better than that. But 3% uh, lean right here, I don't necessarily like that. So I'm going to go ahead. If I'm going to change this cell, I'm going to go ahead and change all three. And so I'll select all three of these cells individually, copy those, and make note that we're at 5875 on the curve, and jump back over and let's look at our airflow, general, mass airflow versus frequency. And as I said, we were at 5875. Now we've got a couple options here. We can go ahead and apply this as a whole or apply this as a half. Now, since we're lean, I'm going to take into account that we want to at least shift it this much and so I'll apply this change completely so let's find our cell again 5875 I'm going to paste special you do this by right clicking and multiply this by a percentage 
Now we've made that change. If we come back through here, we can see it. Let me turn off the graph down here at the bottom so it's not scrubbing through on me. And I'll take a look at it and make sure that it jives with the cells on both ends. So if this cell was higher than that one, that cell's probably wrong. Same ordeal, if this cell was lower than this one, uh, this cell is probably wrong. And so I might have to come out here and either do some smoothing or maybe interpolate it even a little bit to bring these values in line. So scrubbing through the rest of this, we're getting a little bit lean up top. And so I'm actually gonna come up here at 6,500 and I'm gonna grab the rest of this data out to the end of this chart and copy that over. So we'll jump back over at 6,500. Now, since we are uh, rich, I don't wanna take that whole change out. I wanna make incremental steps on that. I wanna keep it on the rich side. I just wanna get it a little bit closer uh, to where it's supposed to be. And so this is when I'm gonna use this pay special multiply by percentage half. And then we have a cell in here that we haven't hit. I'll go ahead and just interpolate between those two to make it fall in line based on two data points that we did have. And then at the end of it, we'll come back in here and go back into our horizontal split that'll show us our math curve out here. And that's what we're looking at now. Not bad. I mean, there's no uh, ridges. You can see a little bit of a bump there and right there, but it's not bad enough that this needs any smoothing. So we'll go ahead and save this now as math step two and load this up. So let's jump ahead. We're going to take a look at the last log from this vehicle's math tune setup, which is step 16. Took us about 16 to get it to where I like to see it, which is a fairly consistent rich within a couple percentage right above zero. And in fact, we probably could do a little bit more work right in this area where we're getting into four, but I like to see anything up to a three. Now we do have a couple cells down here that are showing lean and they don't necessarily jive with on either side of it. And so what sometimes I'll come in here and I'll actually kind of scroll through here and see the data, you can see how this moves and I can use the arrow keys once I highlight an area down here in the corner to, to kind of play through this manually. And what I'm looking for is whenever we get into that cell, I want to manual, I want to look at the actual data that's being presented and see if uh, it matches with what we're seeing on the graph. Because sometimes you can have stuff, oh, we shot right past it, let's go back. And so we do have just a, a, a tick of lean right there. So we're reading just spot on, perfect 99. And this looks like tipping more than anything. TPS opens up pretty aggressively. We get an onrush of air and then it catches back up as we scroll through here and falls in line. So this is, this is where the mass airflow sensor has trouble keeping up. And because of that, I'm not gonna make any changes to that because we could end up just fighting it and chasing it in circles where that's actually a volumetric efficiency table or speed density table issue is Whenever we went from, let's scroll back and watch our TPS. We Our TPS over here is at zero right now. And watch, all of a sudden, boom, we hit that. We hit 10%. And right after 10%, we're going to start going lean. That is tip in. That is going to be volumetric efficiency. And then it falls back in line fairly quick by the time we get to 25%. And we're not even at 1,000 RPMs yet. So... Uh, it said, don't get too caught up in chasing a correction like this because if you were to really kind of just work very slowly through that area, normally it's not going to show you that lean spike. That is because we are running on mass airflow only, and that's what's causing it. Uh, whenever we have dynamic airflow back enabled, the volumetric efficiency table is going to handle that tip in fueling a lot better, and it's going to keep us from hitting that little lean spot there. But all in all, we have a nice. Uh, rich curve and then we want to make sure that we're getting all the way up this one probably did not get quite up to red line uh, but we want to make sure whenever we're all said and done that we're getting all the way up to red line but work your way up to it you know go out and pull a log go up to about 2000 p or 2000 rpms verify your mass curve going into the 2000 rpms now remember the mass curve is not mass airflow curve is not directly related to rpms it is an airflow so the more load, the more air that the engine is going to be breathing in. So you can get a bunch of different readings at 2,000 RPMs to 4,000 RPMs. So you want to work up slowly to certain RPM points. Then you want to kind of get up to it a little bit more aggressively until you're finally to the point where you have a curve that's nice and safe that you can go out and start doing wide open throttle pools 
and that will allow you to uh, incrementally make the proper changes without having any kind of lean spot you know that you might bump into so uh, that's going to wrap it up for looking at the Gen 3 mass airflow stuff. If you have any questions, as always, hit up the uh, comments down below. Uh, if you like this video, you like this series, make sure to throw the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click that real quick before you get out of here and move on. Uh, we're going to be touching on volumetric efficiency next, so make sure and stick around for that video. Uh, you guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.